Hey there, YouTube. It's Casey Dim at TaxSellAcademy.com. Thank you so much for joining me today as I record this week's episode of the Tax Sell Podcast. As always, if you enjoy listening to podcasts, check us out at TaxSellPodcast.com where you can download us on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's go ahead, switch on over, and record that audio version right now. Welcome to the Tax Sell Podcast where tax sell investing is made easy. My name is Casey Dim and I'm a tax sell veteran. I'm the leading tax sell expert. I'm the author of the Tax Sell Playbook. I'm the founder of the Tax Sell Academy, and I am your host right here on the Tax Sell Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast episode. This is a completely free podcast brought to you through and because of the Tax Sell Academy, which you can check out at taxsellacademy.com. All right, on today's episode, we will be comparing suit to quiet titles to tax foreclosure certifications. Now, if you follow this podcast for any period of time, you likely know what we're talking about here. Now, if you're new to this podcast, those two things, a suit to quiet title and a tax foreclosure certification, will probably make absolutely no sense to you. So let's touch on the basics before we dive into this too much. So when you're buying real estate in a conventional sense on the open market through a realtor, for example, a typical transaction will come with something called title insurance. So in short, it's an insurance policy issued after a third party, such as a title company or real estate attorney, has reviewed what is known as the chain of title. Now, the chain of title is the legal history of a property. Owner one sells it to owner two, sells it to owner three, so on and so forth. It basically creates a chain of the ownership history of that property. They also go through to make sure any liens or mortgages were paid or will be paid at closing so the buyer doesn't get stuck with any unexpected expenses. So if everything checks out, the property is going to be sold and transferred with title insurance, which is generally going to be required and in fact should be required in order to get true market value for a piece of real estate. This is an aspect of buying real estate that you might have not even known was taking place the last time you purchased something on the open market. Now, this title insurance provides the buyer with the assurance that the seller has the ability to sell the property and that the buyer won't be stuck with any issues down the road. In fact, it is insured against any issues down the road through that title insurance policy. And again, it's definitely expected on the open market. So when we get back to tax sell investing, we have to take a look into this particular issue. Now, I've got detailed episodes on this, but in short, as a property works its way through the tax foreclosure process, the chain of title becomes cloudy, also referred to as a clouded title. So in other words, there is not a perfect transfer in that chain of title from one person to the next. That's broken up by that tax foreclosure. So let's look into it a little bit deeper. State tax foreclosure laws require a number of things be done in a very specific manner. Now, some counties handle thousands or even tens of thousands of tax foreclosures every year, and a lot of stuff gets overlooked. In other areas, tax sales might even be challenged in court. And there are plenty of other reasons that the tax sale titles become clouded through the tax foreclosure process. The result is that title insurance companies will tell you they will not insure the titles. In other words, you can't sell your property for full market value with title insurance without first taking the measures required to cure that clouded title. So without that title insurance, you have a few options. You could sell it as is for a discount, which isn't a terrible option. It's something I've done many, many times over the years. Or... You could remove the cloud in that chain of title, which brings us back to today's episode. Now, two of the most common ways to remove that cloud is through what is called a suit to quiet title and a tax foreclosure certification. Let's talk about these now and then we'll compare them. First, let's discuss the suit to quiet title. So as the name implies, this is a lawsuit filed in your local court system and typically is going to be handled by an attorney working on your behalf. The lawsuit will essentially name anyone 
that could possibly have an interest in that property as a defendant. We're talking former owners, uh, heirs to deceased former owners, any potential lien holders, and on and on. Basically, you're suing anybody that could have a claim against that property, and you're suing them for the right for a clean title. So what happens is all these people are given the opportunity to argue in front of a judge why their interest in the property should stand. So if a former owner or lien holder or interest holder decides to defend themselves from the lawsuit, which is very rare, then they must prove why they should keep their interest in that property in front of that judge. In other words, they must prove that the tax foreclosure process was invalid for some reason, or there was some other major error that occurred that goes against the tax foreclosure laws. And then, of course, your attorney would argue against them, and ultimately, the judge would decide. But for a defendant in a case like this, litigation can be very expensive, very time-consuming, and because of that, it rarely happens. What typically happens is you will give these folks the opportunity to state their claim in which they'll have a set period of time dictated by state statute to come in front of the court. The overwhelming majority of the time, they will not respond to that lawsuit, and you'll get what is known as a default judgment entered by the judge that says that you as the plaintiff or the tax investor now has the title completely clear and free. You take this judgment to that same title company and they'll be more than happy to issue title insurance against it for you. So that is a suit to quiet title. The other option we'll be discussing is called a tax foreclosure certification. If you remember right, when I was discussing that tax foreclosure process, I said that there are a number of things that must be done perfect in order to abide by the state statutes. Timelines must be met. Notices must be sent out properly. Paperwork must be completed properly and quite a few other things. Most state statutes are very, very specific in the way that a tax foreclosure must be handled. So with a tax foreclosure certification, you are hiring a third party, a third party company that specializes in just this type of work to go back into the tax foreclosure file. And when they do that, they'll analyze every single document in that file to make sure everything was handled exactly as state law requires. So essentially, they have a checklist. They go down this checklist, and as they're reviewing that file, they check off the boxes, and if everything checks out, they will certify it as so. So once they certify it, they will then send that tax foreclosure certification to the title company that they work with who will issue the title insurance policy for your property. And if there are any issues that would prevent them from certifying it, then they will attempt to solve those issues for you. Now, as of this recording, there are only a few companies that offer this service, with the most popular being a company called Tax Title Services out of California. Okay, so now that we have a recap on a suit to quiet title and a tax foreclosure certification, let's kind of compare these two, right? Let's first talk about the most important part, the reason you are doing this, the result. What are you trying to solve by going through either one of these methods? All things equal and with no problems, you're going to be able to attain title insurance whether you go through a suit to quiet title or a tax foreclosure certification. Now, with that said, there could be some conditions to each one of these methods. Now, with a suit to quiet title, you basically get that lawsuit and you're all set. The judge says that title is free and clear. That is all you need. That lawsuit, take it and you get your title insurance. But with a tax foreclosure certification, you could be forced to use the partner title insurance company when you close your transaction. In other words, you have these tax foreclosure certification companies and they work in conjunction with a title insurance company most of the time in order to insure that title. You might also be required to disclose that the property was a tax deeded property and went through a certification process. And your certification is also typically only valid for a set period of time before you must pay to have it recertified. So if you get your certification today, but you don't sell your property for three, four, five years, 
you're probably gonna have to pay to get it recertified. So keep that in mind. Now, let's look at another factor, potential complications. And both of them do have some potential complications. So with a suit to quiet title, if you have a competent attorney who doesn't file erroneous documents filled with a bunch of mistakes and that kind of thing, your complications are usually going to be limited to the potential interest holders challenging your quiet title lawsuit in a court of law. Now, as I mentioned, this is pretty rare, but it does happen. And if it does happen, well, you're going to have to pony up some extra cash for your attorney to litigate against those folks. And since most real estate attorneys, at least the ones I know, aren't very cheap, it's going to cost you at least a few hundred bucks an hour, and it can become pretty pricey litigating that quiet title lawsuit. Not to mention that some judges are more lenient than others, and they might actually side with the defendant, even if there's some gray area as to whether the foreclosure was done properly or not. Again, most suits are not challenged, but there is a rare chance that it could happen. Now, with a tax foreclosure certification, your potential complications come when they find an issue in that tax foreclosure file that they're working on certifying for you. So perhaps somebody wasn't noticed like they were supposed to be, or maybe there were other errors contained in that file. In those type of situations, the certification company will generally attempt to help you solve those issues. And they'll do this a number of different ways, but their hope is to certify that file for you. Now, they say that they come across uncertifiable tax sale properties less than 5% of the time. So it's not all that common. And in the rare chance that that property cannot be certified and they cannot help you solve it, well, then you will need a suit to quiet title after all. All right, let's talk about timelines now. With a suit to quiet title, you have to contend with a number of timeline related potential delays. First off, you have an attorney. If you have a good attorney, it shouldn't take them more than a week or two to file that lawsuit in the court system. But some attorneys, it sits on their desk for a month or longer before they even file that paperwork. Now, once it's filed, then you'll have certain stipulations of the court that you must follow. So for example, you must notify any potential lien holders or interest holders. And then you have to give them a certain amount of time that they have to respond. This could be something like 30 or 45 days. So basically you notify them and you're stuck waiting for a month or a month and a half, maybe even longer depending on the state's laws. And then you have to get the judge to review everything and issue your final judgment. And depending on where you're located, if they're understaffed and how large their case workload is in that court system, this might take anywhere from a week or two to many, many months. Some systems are backed up eight months or even a year before they even will see your case. So obviously, this delays everything while you are the one responsible for the maintenance and other carrying costs involved in that property. Now, with a tax foreclosure certification, the turnaround times are typically going to be much, much faster. A Florida-based company, Clear to Sell, says that their turnaround time is around three weeks, while Tax Title Services advertises a turnaround time of four to six weeks with a rush order for an additional fee available in less than a month. This is going to be typically much faster than your average suit to quiet title. All right, the last fact we'll be discussing today, and the one that most folks are most interested in, the expense. So a suit to quiet title requires you to compensate the attorney who is preparing the paperwork, plus your filing fees, plus all related costs. Now these expenses, when you total them up, they can vary greatly from 2,000 to upwards of four or $5,000 are somewhat common numbers that get tossed around depending on the location. And that number is substantially higher than it was 10 or even 15 years ago. Now with that said, you can sometimes negotiate a lower fee if you have multiple properties that you need a suit to quiet title performed on and you have the same attorney handle all of them at one time. My suggestion here 
is to call local resources such as other tax sell investors or perhaps even realtors and get referrals for a few local real estate attorneys and then simply price shop and figure out who can give you the best deal for your specific situation. Now, when it comes to the tax foreclosure certification, there's a set fee that is typically used and that fee varies based on the company you utilize. It can go anywhere from $1,950 to $3,000, depending on the company used and the specifics of that property. Now, depending on the location, a tax foreclosure certification might be cheaper or could be a little bit more expensive because different states have different ways that they handle stuff. And in turn, the companies must perform more or less work depending on those state statutes. So as you can see, there are a lot of pros and a lot of cons to both a suit to quiet title and a tax foreclosure certification. The suit to quiet title is really the complete solution, but it does take longer and it often costs more money. Whereas the tax foreclosure certification is typically faster, usually less expensive, but it does come with certain stipulations you must follow and isn't always the best solution if there are issues in that tax foreclosure file. So my suggestion is to continue to learn about each one of these. Discuss your options with a local attorney. Read over the processes for the tax foreclosure certification off of the different company websites and then make the decision that is best for you in your specific situation. There is really no one size fits all solution that I will always recommend. Educate yourself on each one, factor in your personal objectives, and then factor in the property that you have and make the best decision from there. Listen, I truly hope that this helps you understand a little bit more about the pros and cons of each one of these title curing methods. I also hope that this episode has helped you when it comes to your quest for tax sale success. If so, please do me a huge favor and leave us some positive feedback on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on right now. We've had a lot of positive feedback posted recently. And listen, we are so thankful for each and every one of you who have taken the time to do that. And if you're looking for more help on your quest for tax sell success, don't forget to check out the links in today's show notes, including the one to the most comprehensive training that we offer at taxcellacademy.com. Take care and make it a successful day. We'll see you next time right here on the Tax Sale Podcast. Bye-bye.